Hello, my name's Tyler and I have a problem. I just bought this 2003 Mercury Marauder and I have no idea why other than it was plopped right in my lap and I have zero willpower. I was actually trying to sell one of my cars at the time, my 2004 Bentley Continental GT, and went to CarMax where they gave an extremely generous offer on my Bentley of four thousand dollars. At the time, a man was also pulling up in his 2003 Mercury Marauder and they did a bid and offered him $4,500. It's amazing into itself that this 2003 Mercury Marauder is worth more than a Bentley according to CarMax, but their offer on this Marauder was still really low. So the Marauder owner and I had a conversation in the parking lot and Yada yada yada, I bought a Marauder for $5,000. It's probably the cheapest running clean title Marauder in the USA, but I always say this and you all find a cheaper one. But even though it's a great deal, I feel really ashamed of myself. Sick that I can't even walk into a CarMax without poaching one of their bids, and that I have zero self control. Really zero. And now I have another broken car to deal with. For those of you wondering what the hell this weird looking police car is, it's actually something really special. The last of the dinosaurs, and as you know, I love, love land yachts way too much, and when this car was built in 2003, Chrysler had quit making land yachts more than 20 years ago, and Chevy had quit in 1996, making the Ford Panther platform this platform, the last of the breed, which had endured with very few updates until 2011. And even though this Marauder was only made from 2003 to 2004, years before the end of production, most consider this car to be the best of the run. Now, I probably could have just asked the guy to make a review about it and say it's for sale and give his email address, but instead I bought it. What's one more? I guess, what's one more? Why not? Anyway, the main reason why the Marauder is the best is because of its engine. While the normal 4.6 V8 that came in the Crown Vic Grand Marquis and Lincoln Town Car was very reliable, a workhorse really, it only put out 239 horsepower, which is kind of seen as a downgrade from the previous 5 liter V8 of the 80s and early 90s. Similar power, but smaller. Ford actually had the technology to give this engine more power and efficiency, but decided not to with these cars for some reason. But this Marauder is the exception. It got an all aluminum 32 valve V8 that put out 302 horsepower, and this drivetrain was shared with the Ford Mustang Mach 1 and the Lincoln Aviator for some reason. But still, it only had a 0 to 60 of a little less than 7 seconds. I guess you can only do so much with a giant land yacht like this, but Ford really did try to make this thing more performance oriented in a lot of ways. The styling is all blacked out. It has a spoiler, Marauder specific wheels, and looks really, really mean. And the car did actually get cop brakes, cop suspension, and cop rear lights, but it's sort of a hodgepodge from all the Panther cars as it got the steering wheel and rear air ride suspension from a Lincoln Town Car and the nose from a Grand Marquis. And there's a lot more going on on the inside. Yes. Ooh, my Roger. So there are some specific Marauder interior bits as well. You have this weird kind of center console that's got a little silver dot matrix thing going on and some special seats with the little Mercury crest. Now Mercury, he's the Greek god of commerce and business and also apparently thievery and deception. Probably not a very good mascot for a company, but who am I to say? The Marauder from the factory also got auto meter gauges, which look after market, but they're factory, so you have an oil pressure gauge and a voltmeter, making it sporty. Sounds good, but really doesn't do a whole lot. Also unique to the Marauder is their own apparel line, kind of like European cars, which is pretty funny. I'm sure no Mercury has ever had its own apparel line, but the Marauder does, and I'm wearing the Marauder Edition leather jacket right now. There's the little Mercury dude 
all over this thing, just like all over the car. Actually found it on eBay for a hundred bucks, which is really cheap for a leather jacket, really cheap for genuine leather. It's nice and soft. It smells a little bit like aftershave though. Now this Panther platform is famous for being so comfortable and durable and the Marauder is definitely no exception to this. With that cop front suspension, you still have nice tight handling, but it still goes over the bumps like a land yacht. That rear air suspension is fantastic. The seats are also like a lazy boy recliner. <laughs> it's really, really comfortable. Now $5,000 is really cheap for one of these things, really cheap. People are starting to collect and hoard these things. And for CarMax to offer $4,500 on a 2003 Mercury, it's pretty impressive. That tells you how much of a following these cars have and even at a wholesale level, how much value they still have. As far as modern comforts, the Panther platform was really basic. You do have power seats and power windows, automatic climb control, but it's all pretty dated. You could tell people this is a 1995 and they would probably be like, okay. I mean, it, it's, and it's amazing that they really didn't make too many changes up until 2011. The inside pretty much looked the same with the same buttons and the same setup. And by then, super long in the tooth. Obviously at $5,000, my Marauder is a little hooptified. You've got those badges that were painted red along with the Marauder lettering on the rear bumper. Yeah, not so good. I also have a tachometer that is glued at 8,000 RPM. That's very broken. My window goes down and then it kind of needs a little help going back up. It gets crooked. Oh, I probably should have done this while I'm driving. No. No. That's not going to work. There. Oh, no. Come on. Okay, let's pull over and do this. This is really dangerous. One more time. Come on. Come on. There we go. It needs a little help. That's a pretty common Panther platform problem for sure. And also, my brakes have a tendency to stick. It's almost like the brake booster where the master cylinder gets stuck in a certain spot and holds the brakes. It's not doing it right now. It's kind of intermittent. So it's not just the broken things that make this Marauder kind of hoopedified. They also cut out their mufflers to make this thing sound mean. It, it does sound great. I don't mind that all that much. Uh, but they also painted the Mercury badges red. There's also plenty of dings and scratches and things. Mercury wasn't very good with their paint quality at this time either. So there's plenty of imperfections. But the final thing that is definitely a first for me in Hoovy's garage and it's something really that's not in my wheelhouse is in the trunk. I'll show you guys what's going on there when I get home. <laughs> There's an aftermarket radio in here, which is fine, but it's connected to something that's a little ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Twin 15 inch subwoofers. This gigantic trunk is consumed with wheel side subs that shake the entire earth. When you turn on the radio with these things going, the car just shakes itself apart. So that's my latest purchase. One of about a dozen cars that I've bought lately, but most have been for my TV show. So I can't really tell you about it because I don't want to ruin the surprise, but also the producers told me to keep my mouth shut. And that's been open the whole time, hasn't it? Uh. Oopsie. As for what I'm going to do with this car, I don't know. The Wizard is booked with repairs until the year 2020 with all the cars that I need fixed. So really, I'm just now a total slave to my own things. And my videos are becoming more like cries for help than anything else. Still, really cool car. Thank you for watching.